Hey, Regan. Hello. Hey, Kevin. Sorry, I was freaking out. I was like, like five minutes before the internet just starts like, like just like the light and just dips. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm like running over to the neighbor's house trying to like get on the internet, man. I'm sorry. But, um, <laughs> no, it's all good. How are you? How was your, um, how was the end of your last year? Really good. Um, I feel really blessed. Everything, you know, holidays were really smooth, lots of laughter and fun. So just really grateful, excited for this year. Nice. All right. Any plans? Do you have any plans for this year? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> just expanding and growing in, you know, all areas of my life. Definitely want to, um, I don't know, some things I'm still, I'm so early in the process that I can't, I don't want to share yet, but we'll get there when we get there. Creative projects. Nice. Okay. Um, spiritual stuff, I'm assuming, or just... Are you expanding into other areas? Uh, just, you know, um, definitely always spiritual growth and expanding, you know, my work, my community, what I offer. And I'm also a musician. So I'm finally um, taking some pretty huge steps on that front, starting to publish and share my music more. So that's really exciting. That's, I feel like that's going to be a big year for that. Nice. Very good. Very good. Are you um, are you like starting to record some more tracks and stuff to share? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, it's been kind of a block for me because like the techno, like all the technology and the, um, you know, gets really technical. And I'm not really a technical person. I'm more of a creative person. But I finally just committed to mastering the music software and just learning. And I've actually grown to really like it. It's been it's been really fun. I I just feel like there's so many more possibilities that open up when you do that. So we'll see where yeah, it goes. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Like nowadays you can just, people like out of their bedrooms are making like hits. <laughs> like people are playing in the club and stuff. It's pretty wild. And that's what I'm all about. You know, it's like decentralizing that and, and like, you know, I want my music to be, I want it to sound professional, but I also want it to sound real. You know, I want it to sound like real. Um, I don't want it to be overproduced or anything. I want it to be kind of raw, you know, from the heart. Because, you know, music is such a spiritual thing. It's such a powerful force. Nice. We'll drop some links if you want, when you, once you're, you know, ready to share. And um, I'll pop them in the description here. Oh, yeah, I certainly will. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I wrote a couple things down here. Let's see. So let me pull up my notes here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. How was right. your uh, end of year 2022? Sorry? How was the end of year 2022? It was pretty good. Um, it was like 2022 was like, I've done more stuff this year than I've done in like the last like three years combined. So it was like, super hectic but like productive mm -hmm. so um it felt like I was like already just trying to like live my life like trying to like make some moves and then like a whole bunch of kind of like like things kind of connected at once so then like things kind of sped up like it was like it went from here to like here so I had to kind of catch up if that makes sense so yeah. um like I just spent, I basically like went, I spent the whole year like accelerated, like at a hundred percent, just blah, 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 blah. And then end of the year, like my body just was like, yo, stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like you need to relax. So I basically <laughs> just, like, I just shut off my phone. I shut off, like I tried to shut off everything and I just tried to go like outside in the water and just sleep, <laughs> hang out with my dog and stuff. So I feel refreshed now though. But yeah, it was like, it was like the whole year was like, whew. so the end of the year was just like, you know, like just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good it was good. It was good. Yeah. That's um, what the that's what the winter solstice is traditionally about is is resting and slowing down, and it's that time of year to give yourself that that time so you can thrive again in the you know as the light returns. That's interesting, actually, because um. I heard some people saying about like the new year is not the real new year, like some people. And then I also bought a farm recently um, down in Costa Rica. And I guess that's kind of like 
partially where I'm kind of leading where all the, with all the, that's where my questions are at now is that the way the seasons are is like right now is sort of the transition period in Costa Rica from like wet to dry. So, um, like basically like the, 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 the season that's busy is, is the wet season because that's when you want to plant some stuff because when it's too dry, if you plant some stuff, then it'll just die. Right. So you have to plant some, the plants like as it starts raining. So then like they have enough water and stuff. <clears throat> so then when the rain starts, that's like when the season starts and then you have to get busy with, with like the planting and agricultural side. So I guess kind of like, it's sort of like the end of that season is like finally time to rest now. You know what I mean? Cause it's like the end of the season. So it's like all the timing kind of works. I don't know. I just kind of thought of that just now. Yeah, exactly. It's very intuitive. I think about that a lot. Honestly, I, every year I notice more and more because um, I, I mean, I suppose it's a little different where I am up North because we have like different seasons, like um, a little probably more harsh, but um it's like a sine wave, you know, it's like you have like mm. that, um, the, the new year or, and, and it's like a fractal throughout all of creation. You have the, the new year, the new moon, you know, the moon cycles are like that too, where it's like a new beginning time to plant, you know, and then you have the summer or that would be, um, like the full moon, that's the peak manifestation. And then you have, um, you know, like going down into, you could say autumn or fall, you know, that's the time of harvest. That's the time of, going into winter which is the again that's kind of like the death that's that's the rest that's the quiet you know and you just you know hmm. it's just the eternal cycle it's a good point actually it's a good point um i guess sometimes we try and fight the seasons or we like we like forget that we're like part of it too hmm. that's i think that's part of why we suffer so much because we're not connected to nature you know yeah. like this year I used to hate winter and now it's like, I really just have to embrace it. It's like, this is the time of rest. You know, this is the time of, it's like solitude. It's like so quiet and like everything is basically sleeping and dormant. So it's like, um, so I would, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I feel like the new year in January, it is a new year because there's um, everybody believes it. So it, it does create like a new cycle, you know, that we follow right now with the way we uh, follow time but truthfully I would I would say the new year the beginning of the new cycle would be April 21st which is the spring equinox well I guess they plan Christmas and stuff like after the solstice right the winter solstice so mm -hmm. I guess that's kind of like like it's the shortest day so they do Christmas on that day or around that time because then after the holiday it's sort of like the days get longer so it's like something to look forward to, I guess. I guess that's kind of like a mark for like a new, you know, like a good point, I guess, if you're going to mark the new year. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, it is. It's important too, because often, again, like that darkest time, that coldest time it can be really, um, you know, it can be depressing and hard and lonely, you know, especially for our ancestors. So it's like, that's why, you know, it's so important, different traditions, like all around the world during that time of year to, you know, come together and, you know, have gratitude, have gifts, have fun, try to cultivate that light in the dark, if you will. Random question. Do you know anything about hunting? I really don't. I'm, I don't know too much about that. Well, this made me think, like, I always wondered this, like, in New York, I used to live in New York, Um, hunting season for deer, like the regular hunting season for, for like the open, there's different like special sections where like you can use a bow or whatever. But the actual hunting season for everybody, like the open regular with guns, is usually like end of November, December, like, like right, I guess basically like right when it starts to get cold, like winter. And I, you know, I, I don't know, I always wondered why, why they did it that way. Like, I guess in my mind, like the experience of hunting is a sort of like, that's, that's the last bit of meat you're going to get, like. You know what I mean? Like on the one hand, you get the deer gets a chance because it's like super cold. It's kind of gnarly. Like it's difficult for the for the hunter to like go out and get one. And then B, if you do get one, I guess it's kind of like, okay, we got some meat for the rest of the winter. But um, yeah, I don't know. I was just curious. You know, I don't know if you had any insights on that. 
you know, just out of curiosity. I always wondered why they did it that like that. It's it's like it's super it's super like somber. Like when you're out there hunting, it's all cold and like like if you were if it was like summer for example, it'd be like a whole nother vibe. But like I don't know why they do it in the in the winter. But like you're out there, just like you can hear the wind. Like you know, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I imagine there is a reason for that. The first thing that comes to my mind might be. I know a lot of animals um, have babies in the spring. So maybe it's because of that. And by the time you get to winter, they're probably grown. Hmm. Are there any things that, like in your world, that um, go with the seasons? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and as I, as I get older and wiser, kind of like I was saying, I, I try to flow with the natural seasons that I'm living in more and more so obviously you know everything we're talking about uh, specifically north hemisphere for the south hemisphere you just flip it but yeah I try to follow I mean I also follow the moon cycles which is um you know that's an ancient thing there's still many uh traditions and cultures that follow the moon because the moon affects not only the earth but it also affects you know our own um systems so I try to tune into like the natural energies, like I was saying, like spring is the time of planting seeds, you know, um, physically and mentally, you know, that's a good time to, or maybe I'll start with the solstice because we just passed the solstice, which is, as I was saying before, you know, it's that time of rest. And for me, I really tune into it. I can really feel it. Like you were saying, like in the winter, it's like, it's just quiet, you know, um, especially in the North is, is specifically, but you can apply it to this to wherever you are. But um, just kind of flowing with that, you know, like giving, learning to rest, you know, I think we talked about that last time is because a lot of times in our, in our world, it's like, we don't really let ourselves rest. And if you yeah. never let yourself rest, you're just going to get super fatigued. You have to, you know, give yourself that time. So that way, when it is time, you know, in the spring to, to start, you know, it's like, it's like everything kind of is an analogy for like working the earth and growing a garden. It's kind of like that, but, but in your own life as well, if you notice, you can start to notice like, you know, again, like that quiet in the winter and then going into the spring, how it's like, it's all around us. It's just the natural energy. Everything is coming back to life. We start to feel more life and light within us. There's literally more light on the earth. You know, we feel more inspired. That's the best time to, the solstice is the best time to like set intentions and then the spring is when you really start getting to work you know on them like you would if you were a garden but it's kind of like it's the same kind of natural flow um with the seasons and then like in the summer that's like you can just feel it you know you can just feel everything is like thriving like even our bodies it's like everything is just like going so hard everything is like popping off it's like and then the fall, you know, it's the fall, you know, it's everything starts to settle down. It's a beautiful time of harvest and gratitude and reflection. And so just really following um, those cycles. And again, even with the moon cycles, it's the same thing, but that, that happens, you know, every month, kind of following like that energy of new beginnings and then rising up the full moon. Everything is really intense in the full moon. Um, and then, you know, the waning of the energy is a good time to let things go. That's a super interesting point, actually. Like, it's it seems so basic. It's like we have to go with the seasons, but we just forget. I don't know. Like, we get, like, the next thing that this made me think of was, like, in coast, like, I grew up in the States, in New York, with four very marked seasons. You know, spring, summer, fall, winter. And in Costa Rica, it's weird because we're by the equator. So the temperature never gets under like 70 degrees where I'm at. So you're just in shorts the whole time. But the thing that changes is like wet season and dry season. And how it works here is that even though we're like in the on the equator and like slightly north, um, like for example, the thing with with the thing that happens in the, in when you have four seasons in the north is that you have a, a very long day and a very short day also like you have in the summer like in new york i remember the sun was set at like 10 p.m <laughs> and then in the winter it was set at like four you know 
but in Costa Rica, it never, it's like a 40 minute difference. So like in the winter is set to like, uh, like 5.30 and then the summer sets like 6.30. And then the thing is though, that over here, like where it would normally be winter, like it's snowing and it's cold, everybody's hibernating in New York. Here is when the rainy season finally stops and then it gets all sunny and then it gets super dry and then everybody goes outside because the sun's out all day. So it's like the, it's like the reverse. It's like the, it's this weird. So like I've been on an, on another side, like I have been traveling for like a very many years. Like I spent many years, like for the last like four or five years, I haven't spent anywhere more than six months. Like I had to like pick my stuff up and go over like four years, five years. So my body has gone from like winter to another winter or like it's gone from like summer straight into winter and then like flips, things got reversed. So like my body is just completely, it just feels like it's been completely like thrown out of whack. Like it almost feels like I've been in winter for like a year, you know, like that <laughs> happens sometimes. Like that happened one time where, um, I went to, let me think how how to go. I basically like skipped over some summers. So then when I came back, I had to like do winter like twice as much. It was weird. So I think now tying it all back together, now I'm just like over it. I'm like over it. This year was the first year that I've been somewhere for more than six months. And normally I was, I wanted to go home for Christmas this year. But I was like, you know what? Like my body has been in the rainy season this the last six months. I can't just go and do it again. I can't just go into winter. Like I have to just, like you said, like I have to ride it out this time. <laughs> you know, yeah. I have to ride it out. So it's it's crazy. Like in modern society, like what you're saying just seems so basic. But like for somebody like me, where I just, I had to travel and I'm like running like this, like trying to do that is like, a, I have to be like actually conscious of it. I have to like make a conscious choice. So yeah, that got me thinking about that. That's really cool. That's cool you got to experience that though for yourself, you know, and feel, um, cause it is basic, it, but it's like, I feel like in our society, we just miss like the basics like all the time, you know, it's like, but like to like our ancestors and like even like Aboriginal people or people that are connected to the land, it's like, you know they know this stuff I feel like it's like so it's important to to go back to this stuff and remember how it affects us this is the world we're living in you know I'm like I'm like 30 years old I'm 31 I turned 31 this year and I feel like I'm like relearning how to live my life like I'm <laughs> I bought some land I'm trying to grow some stuff so trying to do that you like actually have to be like you actually have to like look at what's happening like with the sun and the land and everything and I, I'm so glad that I'm like doing this because it's like resetting my body. It's like resetting my whole like soul, you know? So I don't think everybody should be a farmer. I'm not saying everybody should be a farmer here, but like, I don't know, like far farming is necessary to connect with nature. And yeah, I think just in general, connecting with nature is, is the move. <laughs> like you said, everything <laughs> you're saying, I'm like 100% in agreement. Um. I guess to tie it into academic composition, now is like the time for, it's like usually in between semesters. So the kids usually have, or, you know, the students, they have off generally about like 15th of December to like 15th of January. Do you have any tips for the students? Any, you know, any things that they can maybe, you know, take, use in their life in this in between semester time yeah uh, really beautiful um well you know tying it in with with where we are energetically it is a really good time to set intentions you know and just I like to you know, think about what I want to create in my life you know what I truly want to create and you know without limits like you know like allow yourself to really um you know, what do you want to experience? This is, this is your life. You know, what do you, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind for, you know, your family, for the world? Um, 
because it, it's like your choices don't only affect you it affects really affects the whole collective ultimately so you know well, this is a really really good time to I would say get like a paper and pen and just think about what you want to create you know what do you want to experience for me I you know I think about in terms of you know my own growth um, improvement diet health um, relationships which make up such a big part of your life and you know career your work what you want to give the world maybe creative projects or you know starting a farm you know as you are or you know it's going to be unique to everyone but thinking you know long term like what you want to do it's a really good time and then you know maybe kind of coming into more of like a what do you want to do this year and set intentions for that and um, you know actually that yeah. made me think it's an interesting time because the kids have to like choose their classes I think um, when I went to college their withdrawal date was like the 25th of January um, so that was the last that was the date that you had to be like locked into your class and then you had to pay but up, up until then you kind of had a little room to like shuffle you could like you could like just go to the first week's class, see if you liked it. And then if you didn't like it, you could, you still had like a week to like, maybe like find another class, kind of like swap it around. So um, yeah, that's an interesting point. I guess maybe take some time to like, think about your, your actual life goals and then maybe see if you can take some classes. If you, if you could like rearrange your schedule in a way where, you know, you could realign with some of the things that you're interested in that you got inspired in over the, over the break yeah exactly cool. that's beautiful timing and anything cool. else too you know like whatever habits you know and just start sometimes you start with baby steps start with what you can do you know and just go from there did you do any of that for this year yeah I do that every year <laughs> I actually do uh, it um very often I'm always thinking about what I want to create it's always kind of just like an um, like not in a way you know it's a balance you can't be obsessed about it you have to be present but I'm always thinking about what I'm creating you know like you said I feel like I was able to create more in the past year than I have you know in a long time so I feel like it has to do with that spirit and that attitude of yeah I don't know I just think about it a lot I just because because setting intentions is so powerful so it's like just just the power of reflecting and thinking you know I feel like that alone is so powerful just taking a moment to think about what you want to experience, you know, and how you can go about tangibly making that happen. Okay. And it is New Year. So it's like, it's perfect time to do that, you know, not just, you know, corny New Year's resolutions, but it's just a good opportunity to, to take stock in your life and see what you want to create. Awesome. Okay. So on the list of topics that I have questions that I had for this week, was I saw this um TikTok and it was like I think it was some monk or something. He was talking about this concept of um second death. I don't know if you've heard of that before. And he was basically saying where um in a person's life sometimes they actually die twice. Like one time would be like the actual physical death, right? Which is the final. But then sometimes people have like another death where it's like, um, I guess like a spiritual kind of death or it's like a death of the ego. Sometimes some people call it, it's kind of like, there's different names. It's kind of like a mysterious thing, but there's a sort of concept where you kind of have like this death and rebirth. And then you're able to like, like the second half of your life, your physical life that you have left, you know, you maybe have another chance to do something. Um, you know, not everybody, but that's sort of the idea, the concept of like second death. Um, do you know anything about that? Have you heard of that concept? Have you, you know, mm -hmm. any thoughts? Yeah. A lot of times, um, I guess what I call what you're talking about is a uh, dark night of the soul. It's a lot of times that people... Um, it just depends, you know, yeah, not everybody has it, but it's usually it happens when you have like, for whatever reason, whether it's something that's happening outside of you or whether it's just, you know, happening within you, it's usually both. Um, 
had such heavy trials and tribulations, I guess you could say. A lot of times that's how it happens in a crisis where it just kind of like breaks you. Like it's this weird thing that it's kind of, it seems kind of paradoxical because it's like, it kind of, it, it, it's weird. Like it kind of shatters your reality. It kind of shatters your beliefs. That's kind of the death aspect. And it, I, you can't sugarcoat it. Like it is painful. It's like, oh my God, you know, a lot of times it's like, I don't know. It's weird because it's like everything, it's all so much that it kind of like breaks you. But at the same time, it, it breaks you open and it actually ultimately liberates you if that makes sense because if you see it through it's like it's actually a huge blessing because um a lot of times like when you have a moment like that it's a call to action of like you know you're not living how you like the full potential that you could be living at you know and there's it could be a major thing like that um you know which you could call like an ego death or dark night of the soul where it, it's like basically your personality who you think you are is like shattered and, and you're and it's brutal but it's like it's kind of necessary because that's how you actually awaken to who you really are as like an eternal soul so it's very liberating you get like all that programming um shatters but, but so you're saying you just to clarify like some kind of like event some kind of traumatic experience that kind of like snaps you out of it it forces you to like break out of that that previous perspective you had is that accurate yeah it can I mean it can happen in multiple ways too like it can happen in that way um you know it could happen for example sometimes people drink like ayahuasca um you know medicinal psychoactive brews people sometimes have experiences like that um in meditation but also and this is why you know it's so beautiful to by your own will start exploring yourself um, and start exploring your own spirituality, because if you do that, then you might actually be able to have a rebirth experience without having to go through something so, you know, um, brutal, you know, it's kind of like, you know, they say, like, listen to the whispers of your body, or you could even say whispers of your soul, like you start listening to, oh, yeah, like, I don't feel good about that, or maybe that's not right for me, but I'm still doing it, you know, maybe I should make changes in my life. And, and you know do the right thing but if you just keep ignoring that and ignoring that and ignoring that a lot of times that's when uh you know something will just blow up in your face and you'll have to be you have to you know face it and you can either take the road of um truly facing it and that would be like the ego death that would be um you know going on that journey within yourself or you know some people might try to go even deeper I guess like deeper into the matrix deeper into like uh, escapism or like avoiding that reality because it's a lot but it's like it's always worth it it's always always worth it it's never as scary as it seems either it's like oh my god I can't confront myself but when you finally do it it's like it's I'm not saying it's easy but it's always um worth it you know because so much growth like that's when you activate your power through facing your tribulations do you have any experiences like like I'm for somebody listening you know is there like actual story like either personal or that maybe one of your clients or just maybe somewhere that you read or whatever that um that where they where they basically went through that like what was something that happened like actual account Hello. Hello. Okay, you're back. It cut out for a second. Did you hear my question or should I repeat it? Uh, can you repeat it, please? Sure. I was basically just saying, do you have any ex like stories of of an of a time that happened with somebody? Mm -hmm. Like either, you know, you experienced it or some friend or somewhere like in a movie or something that was real. But um, yeah, you know. Just can you describe a time that somebody changed? Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like I can only say I like I feel like one time it was really extreme speaking from my experience for myself. You know, I feel like we all have maybe a point that was the darkest. And I can 
you know, share that within my own life. But at the same time, like, I often feel like I'm like dying and reborn, like all the time. Like, it's just, again, it's kind of like that sine wave, you know, that we were talking about with the, with the seasons. It's like, we have our own seasons and it's like, I feel that within myself sometimes it's like old versions of me or maybe old um, patterns or behaviors or things I used to do or people I used to hang out with. It's just all of a sudden it's like when you grow, some, it's like sometimes all that stuff like just doesn't resonate anymore. And it's like parts of you that kind of have to literally die and, and be reborn. Um, but the biggest example for me, well, you know, I feel like I've had a few, <laughs> a few events in my life like this, but um like my first awakening we talked about a little bit last time when I, I uh, started kind of um, questioning you know this reality and realizing a lot of the lies and corruption and gaslighting and manipulation uh, for me that was kind of like a dying moment because I was a part of you know being a part of all that and then all of a sudden having this kind of like it is kind of unexplainable it's kind of like it feels like a divine intervention because it's all of a sudden it's like it's just like oh like I can't live like that anymore like I can't go back to that you know and again it happens differently for everyone and then there's another instance in my life where I was in um a really like toxic relationship and I was like just like so gaslighted and confused and it was just like um yeah it was really really painful like I was really really depressed like really really wanted to give up on life like you know and um so that's kind of like one of those dark nights of the soul moments where it was like I wanted to give up but you know by grace I was able to like pull myself up out of that you know what I mean and like be reborn and because of that experience that's like that's why I am the way I am without that without these painful experiences that were so intense you know that I absolutely hope I never have to do again but you know I'm so thankful that they happened because they made me who I am like there's no way I would have like the wisdom and the um, knowledge I have now if not for those moments so the I guess the question is like sometimes people go through stuff and then they just don't come out right it's just too much right so how did you like how was how did what was the story where how did you make it like on the other side like how did you not just end up in a worse place right like what was it you know maybe you might have to go into more specifics it's up to you you know you want to change topics but like you know how do you what specifically happened mm -hmm. like how did you specifically um because like like you could just like sometimes people like leave a relationship a toxic relationship but then they just go back in another relationship right that's toxic so what kind of like how were you reborn i guess mm -hmm. how did you change you know after the experience mm -hmm. yeah I, I can get more specific but the first thing I want to say too because it's so simple it really is just like have it so simple is um like following and I this is just what I want to call it right now is following the living God within it's like you know and you can call it God you can call it um the Holy Spirit your higher self like your heart like who you truly are the higher power of love consciousness within you for me, that's always been my guiding light is to follow that no matter what. So it's like, even if it's hard or like, because I feel like it, that is so simple. It's like that will always guide you to where you need to go. And you really have to get close with that part of yourself and have a relationship with that part of yourself, because that's the part of yourself that will never let you down or lead you astray. You know, it's will in a way carry you, um, you know, people who get stuck in it. It's like, it's like they're getting kind of stuck in it's almost like they're getting stuck in like the the matrix like they're kind of a lot of times they don't have that strong connection within themselves which you do have to cultivate and practice but it it's like it should be in my opinion your first priority over anything because everything is within you like all of your power like everything you need like the like god is literally within you so it's like you have to learn how to cultivate that because that's going to bless you throughout your whole entire life. That's the first thing that's, and that'll keep you from getting pulled into like these external things of like getting back into that relationship or getting back into 
those old patterns. But um, so that's really what, you know, what happened to me. So when I was able to, you know, get out of that situation and I'm not trying to be vague. It's just, it's such a long convoluted story that I don't even know where to uh, <laughs> go with it. But like, um, you know, ultimately I remember it took me a long time. I mean, I was in it for, I mean, about a year, I guess it's not that long, but for me, you know, that was a long time. And it just kind of like finally hit me, like what was going on that I was like being gaslighted and that I was basically living a, a lie. Like, I don't know, that part just, um, it just kind of hit me. I feel like at, at the right time. And I, you know, I realized I had to, I realized early on in my life that you have to you can't ignore your soul. Like if you ignore your soul, you're going to get yourself into shit every single time. Like no matter how hard it is, you have to just honor and recognize what your soul is guiding you towards because literally, because I've just seen it, you know, I've seen it with my parents. I've seen it so many times in my life where people just try to ride the fence and ignore reality. And it's just like smack down. You know, I, that was a part of my childhood. I saw my parents go through. So I'm just, for me, I, I really don't, mess around with that when I realize like I'm doing something that's like not healthy um well that's an interesting point actually yeah that made me th actually this whole question made me think of like the concept people say soulless um like they have no soul and I guess like somebody who's soulless would be like what you're saying is somebody who does not have that inner voice I guess or they just stamp it out like that's you know that's like that would be like your soul trying to be like hey what's up you know <laughs> like you should do this but then <laughs> yeah. if somebody's like they just ignore it then they're just like a vessel they're like a body I guess I guess that's kind of like the first the concept of two deaths that made me think of it was like like yeah like there could be a situation where you're just the soulless empty shell of a person so I get yeah and, and then so sometimes that happens like that that could be like your first death like for example like you know as a child you have like this super nice beautiful outlook on life but then you know like over time maybe people beat it out of you so then you become like this robot so then you become soulless so then you know you need this like you need to almost to like that old personality has to like die and then you need to be like you need like a new like a new person has to come out of it, like a new soul. I don't know, like, man, it sounds kind of crazy, but you, I guess, you know what I'm, you know what, like, am I making sense here? Yeah, it's an ancient archetype. It's the phoenix, you know, it's the mm. dying and, and being reborn from your own ashes. And it's intense and it's painful, but it's the most worthwhile thing you can do, honestly, because you really do emerge from your own ashes as long as you keep following that love like within you like which you never could be separate from it unless you choose to ignore it really hmm. once you know <laughs> this uh actually that makes me think of when i went to college like um i was studying i didn't know what to study like i kind of just went into college My parents were like just go you'll figure it out i'm like all right so i was studying like music actually i was studying like music production because i was really into like recording stuff like i wanted to like record people um, like in studios and stuff but then there came a point when I like worked a job like over the summer and like worked in a studio and I was just like okay this is this sounds cool but like actually all day I'm just like in a dark room like <laughs> like you know like I don't see the sun I'm just recording music in like an isolated chamber and so then I had like this I was like I can't do this and then I just switched my major so yeah I don't know sometimes mm -hmm. I guess sometimes you know you got to just analyze your life and make some choices if you feel like things aren't going in the right direction yeah and, and I feel like that's kind of you know that's such an important point because that's that's how you start to get in touch with like um you know people call it like your emotional guidance system it's like 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 you know living for what genuinely makes you feel happy and fulfilled you know what I mean and like more of that more of that you know less stuff that makes you feel like a robot and soulless and you know unfulfilled <laughs> like more stuff that puts you on fire you know that's why we're here yeah okay this zoom chat might end so let me if it closes i'll send you another link and we'll just do okay. another <laughs> yeah another round all right one more. sounds good